Where you saying what takes invest? We'll talk about investing, finance, and professional development. For today's video, it's in purpose only. The investment we're talk about today will be Ethereum, take your ETH. So in relation to the video I posted on Bitcoin earlier today, I also want to talk about Ethereum real quick, just to see how the correlations are propelling between the two. In respect to the whole crypto boom and the search that we've had yesterday across the whole entire crypto market, the search on both Bitcoin and Ethereum was mainly driven by the Elon Musk article, the media affectation around his potential of proposing to accept Bitcoin as a form of payment again. But with a great contingency of using only 50% as a form of renewable energy source of mining those Bitcoin as the source of the Bitcoin. So I'm going to go through a technical analysis to see with respect to this article and based on the supply and demand dynamics in the charts that we see in the technical analysis perspective, how substantive is this new catalyst that we're seeing in the chart? And what the resistance level we should be looking out for in terms of like dollar cost averaging or maybe potential taking some profit from there. And my price target for year in 2021 as well. So stay tuned, stick around, let's make some money. Moving on to the technical analysis for Ethereum ticket ETH, you can see that with respect to the green candles that we're seeing, this is mainly driven by the media affectation coming from Elon Musk again, right? With his proposal to accept Bitcoin as a form of payment, right? And you can see that ever since that dump that we had uh, on 611, basically it was on a Friday. Uh, and the reason that we got this like, you know, relatively a sizable sell off right from the $2,467 to the $2,287 was mainly coming from the positive CPI report that we got on the equity portion, right? We subsequently have the anti-correlation effect, you know, equity market goes up, crypto market goes down because crypto is a form of safe haven. And as of the, during the weekend, you know, on sa on Saturday, you know, on the 12th, which is, yeah, June 12th was the Saturday, we were just kind of percolating, not doing much because of lack of catalyst. You know, people were, I guess, were having that weekend effect again, right? People were not really contemplating on, hey, are we going to be buying today? Are we trading today? People were just kind of taking a chill day on that specific day. However, on Sunday towards the noon time, I believe on afternoon around like 2 p.m. on the East Coast, um, the news came out with respect to Elon Musk proposing to accept uh, Bitcoin as a form of payment going forward with the contingency of 50% of renewable energy source for mining those Bitcoin respectively, right? And that subsequently drove a lot of obviously crypto drag effects across the world in the crypto world, right? And you could see that Bitcoin was up yesterday. You saw that mega green candle and with that drag effects and correlations, uh, Ethereum also was up again, right, with respect to pumping from the $2,333 all the way to currently uh, $2,600, almost $2,588 uh, $2, level, which is a relatively, you know, good surge, right? I would say we're up about close to about 12% at the moment if you combine both today and yesterday. Um, and with respect to how substantive is this uh, technical analysis perspective, right, I would say you know, the, the substantiveness of this surge is a lot better in comparisons to Bitcoin, knowing the fact that Bitcoin at the comparable levels that we're trading at right now is not as substantive in terms of consolidation in comparisons to Ethereum, right? And also on top of the fact that you could see that the MACD is slowly, it's crossed up right now. You can see that the MACD, which is the yellow line versus the blue line, which is the signal line, is crossed up recently. And we still have a little bit more room to cross upward, right? So I do see a little bit more of a surge coming for Ethereum to be going up potentially as a first level of resistance to somewhere like the $2,600 or even higher to the $2,750, which is the true substantive consolidation level, right? During this oscillations that we're for currently experiencing, right? However, you see that on the RSI perspective, we are leaning more towards like the highly bought level at the moment, not like super highly bought, but like with that propensity leaning more towards that way right now. So I do see some more of like a 50-50% chance that we are going to be uh, dipping in the short term, but we still have a little bit more room to run to, to a more substantive level of like the $2,650 level before the sell off from there, right? But because of the fact that we have some contradicting uh, signals that we're seeing both on the MACD and then from the RSI lines right now, that I think is more like um, I think the the search for the for for us to get to the two thousand seven hundred and fifty with this news as a form of catalyst. If you think about the news, right, with respect to Elon Musk 
potentially accepting Bitcoin as a form of payment contingent on the renewable energy source identification is a is a good foreshadow. But I think with respect to like how substantive is it uh, into giving you know confirmation or confirmatory pressure on sustaining the level that we at right now, I would say is relatively weak, right? Because of the fact that how likely and how possible are we going to be able to identify the mining source of these renewable energies right how likely is that i mean just think about that in the comparable perspective like in your living room in your bedroom using your appliances around your home right how likely are we going to be able to identify each of the electricity sources that we have have around the world right and also on top of the fact that cryptocurrency as a whole is a decentralized type of assets right we we don't we don't really have a lot of uh, compliance pressure around it right then that's the reason for the decentralization when the term itself defines it that way so when you are talking about routing or putting the specific understanding on the source of the energy that's kind of counterintuitive in a way um so so the message itself it's it's good in in terms of like providing a drag effects to the market but it's bad because of the lack of substance in terms you know behind reading between the lines of what they're proposing here right so i think this is a relatively more of a short fuse if you may uh i think you know with respect to this like two days of search that we've had already on sunday and today and this noon already uh as i'm recording around like 12 30 already that the likelihood of like going back down soon would be relatively more uh likely in comparisons to surging even higher to the 2750 dollars because again right the level of sustainability with respect to the article on the catalyst perspective and also on the TNA, the technical analysis perspective on the supply and demand level is relatively short lived, right? Knowing the fact that, you know, the consolidation level uh, at the current level right now, if you see, we have currently, we're kind of like floating around like this level that we tested back in on the 9th and the 10th. And if we look back where we saw that we were testing that around like the May 29th is, uh, again. And then if you go back, you don't see any level of substantiveness of consolidation, right? So we are, you know, not really floating up in the air right now. But in terms of like the consolidation, in terms of like the market appetites is relatively weak right now. And, and looking back on the evidentiary support of what this article is saying is foreshadowing, but it's not confirmatory, right? So... In translation of those, if you encapsulate those factors together to formulate your ideas of is it the right time to execute the price point, I would lean more like the 30% yes, 70% no in that spectrum. Just the way it's depicting at the moment right now, right? With respect to like the near term, I still see more of an oscillation going forward. I don't see it like a major catalyst for us to break through the $3,000 level. I think the like of us breaking through that, it was really going to contingent on a really positive substantive news that we're going to be seeing more around the utilization of the corporate adoption level relatively to just like news that we got from Elon Musk, right? So I think what we're going to be seeing going forward is going to be going up to like the maybe possibly 2,650, knowing the fact that the RSI is already pretty much on a highly bought level. We are crossing up, so I do see a little bit more surge coming, but not like significant. And then we go sell off back to like the 2000s, um, you know, $250 uh, and further consolidate from there and oscillate from there. And again, right, we still need to confirm based on my previous videos on the upward wedge that we're forming, right? It seems like the wedge is pretty much formulating going forward based on the trends that we're seeing, right? we are forming more of an upward escalator curve, right? And we still need to further confirm because like today was one of those like black swan catalysts, like those, you know, it's driven by an article, right? It's nothing really substantially driven by the supply and demand, demand dynamics in a logical perspective baked into the technical analysis, right? So today is more of like an outlier that's forming right now. So this is not truly a, a confirmatory signal for us to know if this is really truly an upward trend that we're seeing right now you know, basically foreshadowing a, a, a sell-off coming, you know, to a lower level again, right, to the 1731. That is the potential level that we will go down if we break the wedge that we're forming right now, right? So I would say if you were to buying in today, um, I wouldn't buying it right now, to be honest with you, because of the fact that we should be expecting some sort of like a reversal coming. So if you want to swing trade this, I will wait until like we come back down a little bit more before we buy in. 
because like you know it's not the most opportune time right now right uh because of this catalyst that we're seeing that's relatively short fuse oriented uh so hopefully that's helpful uh in terms of like how you could play this out in a long-term perspective but also in the short-term trade perspective all right so just to recap on all the numbers that we just talked about today with respect to ethereum i think the current level that we're seeing right now um you know driven by the search that we've had on this article around elon musk I think, you know, because of the fact that there's so lack of substance and the consolidation level at the current level is relatively, you know, weak. Um, to day trade right now would not be the most opportune time frame that we would want to be doing at. We want to wait off until we go down to a, like a more of a substantive level before we buy up to, you know, to get that swing trade to make that profit, right? Um, and if we, if you buy it now, I think you could make a profit because of the fact that again, right, the MACD is still crossing upward, uh, despite the RSI is highly overbought at the moment, right? Not, not super overbought, like, but, but more leaning towards the propensity of overbought at the moment that the gains is going to be relatively weak, right? You, do you want to make like a, like 50 bucks or do you want to make a couple hundred bucks, right? So if you want to make a couple hundred bucks, I would wait until a better opportune time coming. Um, and I think the better opportune time would not be around like the 2450 but if you want to hold it for a long term I think it's a fair number for you to buy in right um, and I think the for, for us to go down to like the 200 2220 would be more likely in the near term uh, as we further oscillate and further consolidate at those levels um, and if we are we going to be going down to the 1750 I think the likeliest getting there would be relatively weak in the near term but we still need to verify and confirm on the upward wedge that we're forming right now because it seems like based on the the trends that we're seeing for the last couple of weeks we are forming more of an upward wedge at the moment despite this news that we're seeing today you know uh and yesterday uh but you know this is more of like an outlier driving into the market catalyst right so we we can really bake that into our adjustments for the analysis for the wedge so um still need to verify still need to confirm so we need to like watch out and be more observant going forward and really hawk the number going forward and with respect to my corporate adoption uh, assumptions 20 percent is still very conservative based on our assumptions here knowing the fact that we did test like 10 percent or even like a little bit more than that like you know in a relative short amount of time like just a couple weeks right and uh, if we were to buy in the $2,450, which is like the comparable level that we're at right now, that was subsequently generate like a 4x of money, 400% of your money, which is an enormous gain if you think about it that way, right? And um, in within the 12 months price target. So definitely a great return. Uh, I feel fairly confident in this long-term buy pro proposition going forward, but you still need to like sustain your mentality and don't let your emotions like ruin your play in the long-term fundamental plays going forward to get your long-term capital gains uh, that we are hoping for eventually. So that's it for today with respect to my technical analysis on Ethereum ticker ETH. Hopefully you guys uh, get more clarity and transparencies around the correlations between, you know, the relationship dynamics of the crypto market as a whole and how that, you know, lack of substance media affectation is driving this, uh, you know, as a form of catalyst for the supply and demand for the price point that we're seeing for Ethereum, right? Hopefully, you know, it gives you more clarity in terms of uh, how you're going to be executing your trades going forward. Uh, and try to stay safe and try to stay sane at the same time using your logics and your analytics to make your formalized decisions going forward and not your emotions and that's why i came in right and please hit the like button subscribe and also the bell notification and uh, watch out for next week coming up take care bye